Okay, great. All right, brilliant. So yeah, as I, as I mentioned, this is the hike refresh. What I want to do, um, just make sure a new person joining. I'm gonna run through a refresh of the, the main hike features. Some of you may already be aware of these features, but what this is going to do is it's going to just give you an update on any new tweaks that we've done or any of the latest features, and then just, just a, a refresh to make sure that you're getting the most out of the platform as a whole. So hopefully you can all screen, see my screen, okay? Nadja, feel free to unmute yourself and jump in if something goes horribly wrong. Um, so yeah, as you can see here, we've got the dashboard. The dashboard really just has top level stats from each of the different sections. So I'm not gonna run through this in much detail, the one thing I would note, say is that at the bottom, we've usually got some resources and some tips. So do check this out. We've got a blog post, Facebook group, the latest video that we have on our YouTube, our Vimeo channel. So yeah, do check that out. All right, great. So I'm going to run through first the strategy features. So hike uh, roughly breaks down to three parts, just like an SEO campaign. You've got the first part, which is just building an SEO strategy. So this will be the same no matter what form of business or marketing you're in. First, you need to decide, okay, what is it that you want to achieve? Where, what's your target? What's the goals? What's the strategy you want to be? So that's what I'm going to run through first, which is the strategy. The next part following that, you've got the actions, which is where you actually implement that strategy. Uh, that's how the action engine is going to help. A couple of extra things, really mainly ongoing SEO, a bit more specific to backlinks and local, and then reporting. So that's the third part, really, of a successful SEO campaign is, okay, how am I doing? How are we performing SEO-wise? What's working? What's not? Where do I need to focus my, more, uh, my time and energy? Okay, so great. Let's go through the strategy features. I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to whistle through these quite quickly. So the first part is keywords. Um, I actually had a message from someone yesterday about um, want to make sure that you know, they're getting the most out of this. Uh, I'm going to post some resources up on the Facebook group really over the next few days and next week as well about how to do really good keyword research. Um, so do keep an eye out for that. And if you're not a member of the Facebook group, do join. It's called Hike SEO for Startups. So make sure you join that. So there's three ways that you can find keywords in Hike, right? And this is going to help you to populate a list of phrases that you want to target and get to the top of Google for because this is what your customers are searching for, right? So first off, enter a phrase at the top. We call it a seed keyword. Um, and if you click this button here, you can filter your results. So if you search this, click on this, sorry, what it does is it shows you all of your previous searches that you've done here previously. So if I click on SEO tools, for example, it filters these for all of the keywords um, that Hike brought back as related suggestions around SEO tools. So again, if you click on that, you can see now that the source has changed to SEO tools and I can see all the different variations. So you wanna be looking for the relevance of these keywords, you know, how relevant are they? Um, so for example, one I always show is it usually says free SEO tools. We're not free, we don't have a free, uh, a free tool. Uh, we have a free SEO report, but not a free tool. So it wouldn't be something we'd optimize for. So even though it might be listed here, it's not relevant. So you do wanna also look at the relevance of these keywords. You wanna look at search volume, What's the uh, opportunity size of that? And then priority. So priority is really just to look, okay, you know, I've got a couple of keywords here that I like. They've got similar search volume. Which one should I go for? Because priority is gonna take into consideration the competitiveness and your achievability for that. You can look at existing keywords. So keywords you already rank for by clicking this. One little tip, if you hover over the button, it will show you um, your, where you rank for that. For that keyword, so you can see we're at position 32 for that. And you can see competitor keywords. This is based on the competitors that you add into Hike. But I'm gonna go into this in a bit more detail in the competition section, because I actually like to look in there to do my keyword research for competitors. And clear filters there, find a keyword that you like, click the plus button, add it into this list. So this is really, really important, right? Because this is where Hike gets everything from, right? You're telling Hike, hey Hike, these are the keywords I want you to get, help me to get the top of Google. So that's going to be really important. So if you haven't done for a while, come back to this section and review these chosen keywords. Review your keyword research. You probably learned stuff over the, maybe the last few months, last couple of months, maybe the last six months, more about the business, more about your customers, more about what works, what doesn't. Um, and do some, do some new keyword research. You'll find that you'll, you'll discover some new phrases and then you can start to optimize them. Okay, great. I'm going to move on from here. As I mentioned before, I'm going to go quite quickly through this. So if you've got any questions, put them in the chat. Now you'll get back to you and we'll answer them at the end. Next up is sitemap. So sitemap is, um, we haven't really made too many tweaks to this, so there's not really much to say. 
I, what I would say is you now have the ability to refresh the page. So if you added this page maybe a few months ago and you've, up, or maybe even a few weeks ago actually, you've updated the metadata since or uh, following Hike's last crawl, because Hike crawls your website every month and you want to make sure this update, just press the refresh button. We're going to go away immediately, collect the data for that page and put it back in here. As before, make sure that you're adding the most relevant keywords to here. Um, if you click on here and you've got some leftover keywords, what you really want to be thinking about is, do I have pages on the website that we can use to optimize these keywords? Um, if not, you have to create a new page. Um, and you can tell Hike that you're going to create a new page, right? So you need to check this little box. So let's say I'm going to create a, a new page. And it doesn't really doesn't matter what you put in here. The whole point is that you're telling Hike, hey, I'm going to create a page. You know, this might be the URL, this might not be the URL, but I'm going to tell you that I'm going to create it. So then I can assign this keyword to it. And then Hype remembers that. And then in your actions, it's going to go, hey, Andy, remember you said you were going to create this new page to optimize this keyword? Don't forget. And then you tell Hype what the page is. And then Hype's then going to come up with the recommendations to help you optimize that keyword even better. So, yeah, um, all fairly straightforward as it was before. Make sure you're using that new page feature. Um, you have the ability to export this. So, there's a lot more export functionality within the platform now that we released over the last few months. Um, super relevant more for um, if you're looking after, if this isn't perhaps your website, maybe you're looking after it for someone else, you're an agency, um, then you can export it and send it to your clients. Makes that communication a lot easier. All right, great. We're gonna go on to the next bit is content. Again, I don't, content hasn't really updated too much. And so if you guys have already used this, um, then you'll already be familiar with how this works. Um, one of the, the couple of tips that I would do whenever, whenever we add, whether it's for ourselves or for one of the hike users that get in contact, whenever we add a title to the scrap board, we always, uh, we always edit the title. So I click edit title and I make a little note about what keyword it is that I'm choosing this blog post for, because half of the, half of the, the win you can get from a blog post is that it's supporting you the keywords that you're going for across your website. So. This blog post title here, like how does local SEO benefit small business? That's gonna help our small business keywords. So when I write that blog post, I'm gonna make sure that I'm gonna interlink to my small business SEO page where I'm trying to optimize for small business SEO software. So then I know that, oh yeah, this is the blog title that's gonna help and it's gonna create that. And I can make sure that I'm creating enough blog titles uh, to support all of my keywords, right? Each of the different keyword topics I'm going for. So that's a little tip that we do. Another thing is make sure that you um, use this drag and drop feature to put them in the order of the ones that you want to do, uh, you want to prioritize. Because Hike then uses this in the action. So when you get an action saying, hey, you need to write a blog post about this and you haven't done it yet, it's gonna work from the top downwards. So yeah, make sure that you're doing that as well. Um, right, and just quickly go to the helping you find new content topics. So click that button, it's gonna take you through to this section. Obviously, you can add a new search. It's gonna bring back um, content suggestions for you to write blog posts about. So all that's fairly straightforward. I'm not gonna go into that into too much detail. Something that a lot of people miss is this little competition button here. If you click this button, what it's going to do is it's gonna pull through all of the competitors that you've added into Hike, which we're gonna run through in a second, all of the blog post uh, keywords that they rank for. So, this is the demo accounts. We've got a real variety <laughs> of websites. So Salt Dog Cycling is something we've added into the, the competition tool to show one of our demos. But you can see here, that was a competitor for someone that we did a demo for. And you know, one of the, the keywords that they rank for that they write on their blog is how to install a bike rack on a car. So this is a really good way of actually seeing oh, what my competitors doing and how are they getting traffic from their blog. Um, and you can do a bit of research and go, actually, I could create a blog post around this. So that's a great content idea. I should create something similar or better than my competitor, right? That, that's the key. Create something better. Um, and then you're, then you're going you're gonna to rank above them, which typically isn't too hard um, because most people throw out blog content without really doing it very well. All right, great. Next, I'm going to move on to competition. So the competition bit is one of my personal favorite parts of, um, of Hike. Um, Add in the competitors. So remember, within your account, you get three credits every month. So what three credits allows you to do is either A, add three new websites in. So you might wanna go, actually, I wanna know how these guys are doing for SEO. I wanna know how these guys are doing for SEO. I'm gonna add them in and I'll get all of their ranking keywords, et cetera, et cetera. Um, but what it also allows you to do is you go into settings, you can use those credits 
to refresh the data of uh, reports, uh, competitors you've already got in Hike, right? Um, so I can refresh all of these because what um, something important to note is that when you run these, when I add a competitor, it takes a snapshot there and there of all the keywords they rank for there, all of this data at that point. It doesn't update constantly. If you wanted to get the, you know, if I wanted to get the most freshest data for moz.com in here, I'd need to refresh that order and use one of my credits. So you get three every single month. Um, but if you want to just run an ad hoc one and you've, you know, you've used up your three credits and um, then they're just a pound or a dollar each. Okay, great. So yeah, one of the things that I like to do for this, whether it's for my own website, oh, here's another quick tip. We all, you always have your own website in here. So in the drop down, it's always got your own websites data, which is really handy because then you can see, okay, well, what's all the keywords that we rank for that I wasn't even aware of? Um, traffic, backlinks, blog content ideas, etc. cetera. One of the things that I like to do, whether it's for my own website or you know, looking at a competitor, is to see what's the low hanging fruit. So typically, I'll first, I'll filter by search volume and I'll go, because at the top, these are the keywords with the biggest search volume. So these are the ones where if you get to page one, position one, they're gonna drive the most amount of traffic. Um, and I like, let's see where we are. And what I am looking to see is if this number is between somewhere of five to 20, that means that they're not in the first four, first four positions. You know, they're at the bottom of half page one or they're on page two. They're the low hanging fruit. They're the ones where it's like, you're almost on page one, but you're not quite there. So it might be like, oh, actually, we need to, we need to optimize for this better. So I can spot here, um, Stripe search. That's interesting, it's pulling through one of this. So let's say I wanted to go for that for a keyword. I could go, right, okay, I'm gonna go back to Hype, I'm gonna add it into my keywords. I'm, on the sitemap page, I'm gonna sign it to this. And then Hype's gonna give me recommendations on how to improve this SEO so I can get this from 22 onto page one and take advantage of you know, the 1,300 people a month that search for that. So that's only monthly, right? So you wanna times up by 12 to get the, you know, the annual number of people. Cause that's what Google do. They take the annual, they divide it by 12. They don't factor in seasonality here. It's just a flat number every month. So yeah, that's one of my favorite things. Alternatively, what I'll do is I'll filter by position and I'll go, okay, where these are the ones I'm positioned five down. Okay, okay, which are the ones I really need to focus on. And then if I'm looking at competitors, I'll often look, you know, at the page that's ranking. So if you click on it, you can bring up the page and I go, okay, what is it about my competitor's page that's doing well? So I can look at things like images, word count, the optimization of their page title, their H1s, et cetera, et cetera. Really, really nice bit of um, competitor research there. Cool, I'm gonna move swiftly on. Local, so before I go into actions, local. So hopefully you guys have seen this and hopefully you've added this. Super, what the local section does is it helps you to, um, to optimize the Google My Business listing for a business. So the Google My Business listing is what appears uh, in the Google Maps results. You know, whether that's um, in the Google search results, you get that little snack pack, they call it the snack pack or the local three pack, oh, I can't even say it, it's too many words. Um, you know, you get three results. So my favorite example, if you search something like Plumber London, typically before you get the websites, you'll get the little map pack. Now, if you want to get to the top of that, you have to optimize your Google My Business listing. So the local features are great, well, are really ideal for those websites that serve customers within a geographical restricted location, right? Like town, city, suburb, states. But what I, one thing I would say is that sometimes that map pack can appear for national searches. So uh, we had someone on the platform that did medical market research. Uh, we searched that in Google and actually the map pack comes up first. In, and, and even though the actual map itself shows like results across the whole of the UK, you know, this is where we're based. Um, so actually they're the top of Google, right? Not the websites below, it's those guys. So you want to be checking to make sure that, you know, for your keywords, when you search them in Google, you might not think the map, you know, maps are relevant for you or locals are relevant for you, but actually it might be really relevant for you. And it's probably just a good idea to do anyway. You'll want to make sure that the directory listings um, for your business um, are completely you know, correct. So if anyone's trying to visit you um, or, yeah, anyone's trying to visit you or they're trying to ring you or they're trying to you know, get your contact details, it's all correct. And it's really important just from a business point of view. So I'm not going to go too much detail, but you've got the listing optimizer, which helps you optimize your Google My Business listing. I think everyone should do that, whether or not they're local. You know, if you're a national or international, you should really go through that. Your reviews, you probably want to be tracking your reviews. Again, even if you're a national or international client, if you don't want to have bad reviews on Google. So it's going to pull through all your reviews. Google my business posts. 
if you're national or international, you probably don't care too much about that. It's going to help you rank higher in the map packs if you do more my business posts, which is going to be more relevant for local businesses. So if you're trying to optimize your time, I probably wouldn't focus on that too much if you're a national or international client. Um, directories, important for everyone. The local actions is essentially just like the main action page, but just for all the actions within the local section. Insights, so that's going to show you your reporting and then ranking. So this is coming soon. So you won't see this in your version. This is just me. I see it, the special. I've got the admin status. Um, but what we're going to do is we're going to start to, to um, show you your keyword rankings in the map pack and in maps. So you want to see, okay, what location, what's the keywords, who your top competitors are. So this is going to be rolling out over the next couple of months. Um, so yeah, keep an eye out for that. That, that will provide an extra level of, of reporting for you and, and you can then track see how your progress is going. So that's quite exciting. Um, I'm going to now go into actions. So this really, really key part where hopefully most of you guys are spending your time because this is where, you know, this is where you're doing, you're getting into the, you know, the trenches on the front line and actually making the SEO changes. So first things first, go into settings, make sure you've set your hours per month to how much time you want to be spending on the SEO that month. Now you can set it to like eight hours. So you can spend a day a month and just leave it like that. Or you can go in every single month and go right this month. I've got, I you know I've got a day and a half I'm going to spend on SEO. So I want to make sure I'm doing the most important actions in that day and a half or this month I've only got two hours. So I just want to show you two hours worth of actions, right? Make sure you change it because what it does is going to rejig everything in the actions to make sure that it gives you the most important actions to do in that time that you've allocated. So we'll go through that in a section, second. This is quite a key part. Um, pages found, so it's hidden within the sections, settings part. But if you click on here for view pages, what it's gonna do is it's gonna show you every page that our crawler has found when crawling your website. And it's gonna show you the response code, it's gonna give you details about that page itself. But have a quick look on here, because. What you might find is like I was doing this for a customer previously, and there are there are pages on there like a Hello World page uh, or a duplicate home page that, that the customer wasn't even aware of. Um, so sometimes one of my big advice, if you've seen any of my webinars or any any of the posts on uh, Facebook, is to do a site search in Google, like site code on them, put in your domain. Really handy for spotting pages you didn't know were there. This is another way of doing it, right? This is everything um, that hikes found. And you can go, oh, that page isn't meant to be there. I might be able to find that. And bear in mind, whatever we see, Google sees, because we pretend we're Google bot. Um, so do bear that in mind. Also, you can spot 301s, 404s, 500 server errors. So it can alert, can alert you to a bigger issue. They will be pulled through into your actions, but it's still sometimes it's good just to have a, an overview of it, just looking at that data. So let's go back to the actions. Um, so yeah, you're going to get all your different actions. Um, you're going to get the progress bar at the top. This is based on the number, out, amount of time that you've allocated. So if you, you know, if you've allocated two hours and you've done an hour that month, it'll be 50%. If you know, if you've done an hour, but you've allocated 10 hours, it's going to show 10%. So you want to keep an eye on that. You know, it's a good, it's a good accountability exercise as well to do that. So work your way through the actions. There's going to be all different types of actions. You're going to have a time estimates. You've got the color, the color, uh, priority level as well. So red means it's high priority. High priority is basically, this is a quick win action. Yellow is going to be moderate priority. Not that it's not going to have a big SEO impact, but the SEO impact from it is going to take a little bit longer to kick in. So it's not going to be like you make a change now and you can see results in the next few weeks. It's going to be something you're going to do more longer term. Create a piece of content, backlinks, for example. Green is uh, low priority, which just means it's a real long-term action. You still want to be working through those, um, which are important, um, but they're not going to have your quick bang for your buck. So yeah, work your way through this. I'm not going to go into too much detail here. You've got these tabs at the top. View tech items will show you all of the actions uh, items we checked on that page. Good to do a bit of an audit analysis. You can hide all actions on the page. You can complete them all if you don't want to do it one by one. Uh, so have a look through there. A couple of extra bits. Um, you've got view actions by priority, which um, is basically just going to show you all of your actions. So. Uh, on this page, it's restricted to the amount of hours that you put in. If you click either of these, so if I click view actions by type, it's going to show you all of the actions hikes found, you know, across all of the categories. So even if you know you want to do even more than what hikes suggesting because of your hourly uh, restriction, this is going to show you it all. Another thing to show is page speed actions. There's none for hike currently. We've just rolled this out, so this is quite exciting. We hook up with Google Page Speed uh, Insights API, and we're going to show you on a page by page basis. Um, 
improvements you need to make um, that can help your SEO when it comes to page speed. So have a look out for those. In true typical hike fashion, we've made sure that the how to do it tab, um, so how you actually implement that is as simple as possible. So most of the time we're recommending plugins from the most popular CMS platforms because that's gonna be how you're gonna get the, 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 the impact that you need to get from improving page speed. And it's a really simple way of doing it. So keep an eye out for those, that's gonna help you with page speed, which again is gonna help your SEO, which is awesome. Okay, I'm gonna move on from here because I can see the time. Uh, backlinks, cool. So we've got four tabs within backlinks. The first one is just your backlinks, right? So this is gonna show you all of the backlinks you've got at the moment. One important thing to, um, to note is that we've slightly tweaked the scoring system. Previously, we based it, uh, the score on the, the page itself, so the page authority um, of the page that links to you. We've rejigged that to a domain level. So now the, the, the score 10 is based on the domain, which is articlecity.com or blueclaw, or domain stats, uh, indie hackers, product hunt, um, because it's we found that actually that was that was a better uh, better metric to supply to um, our users and is a bit more consistent. So have a look at that. If you see the scores have changed, that will be why. Um, a couple of things that people don't um, miss. This is viewers cards. If you want to see it in a simple list, click that. It's just going to show it in a, a list form. Which some people, if you've ever used a backlink tool before, you might be a little bit more. Um, used to seeing it that way, you might be able to consume the data a bit more, so you can do that. This is something people don't use, see very much, domain authority. Click on here, what it's gonna do is it's gonna track your domain authority month by month over time, so you can make sure that that domain authority score is going up. So you can see here for Hike, um, on the 7th of Feb, uh, we had a domain score of four out of 10, which we work out from two metrics, which is trust flow and citation flow. We get these from Majestic, who's our backlink data supplier. Um, and then in March, five out of 10, five out of 10, five out of 10. Um, but our trust flow and citation flow is going up, which is good to see. So yeah, have a look at this. What you really want to be looking out for, are there any significant drops? You know, things are going up brilliant, but are there any significant drops? If there are significant drops, click show backlinks and have a look at the view loss tab. That's going to show you any backlinks that we saw before, but they're no longer there anymore. And that might be, you know, some really valuable links that shouldn't have been removed, that maybe the webmaster, the person that owns that website linked to you, just removed it for whatever reason, maybe even accidentally, or they linked to a 404 page of your website. So yeah, keep an eye on that. It's really important. You can export all this data. You can filter by date. Loads of stuff you can do there. All right, cool. The next bit, journalist outreach. Um, talk about this all the time, but just, just the best way of building backlinks uh, for small businesses, you know, if your budget's low, you haven't got the money to go out there and do significant kind of outreach and pay for, you know, editorials or, you know, reviews on certain websites, then use the journalist outreach tool. Put in your keywords up here, you know, around your industry. You know, you might be in a niche industry, um, so you might put in keywords and it might not bring anything. So, for example, I've tr I'm tracking the word Stripe. At the moment, this not see it says the number zero? That means there's no journalist requests at the moment that are relevant for the keyword Stripe. I shouldn't be down hard to know if that's the case because it might be that there's just none at the moment because journalist requests only last for a few days, but you know, in a week's time, there might be one or in a month's time, there might be one. So I want to keep an eye out for that. Add in as many keywords as you can. One thing I always suggest, two types of keywords. If you're based in location, add your location. So I might add in Birmingham, for example, or London, because you'll get journalists who go, oh, only businesses in London. Um, I'd love to speak to them about their experience, blah, blah, blah. So that's a good one to add in. Add in small business. There's always requests for small businesses. We're all small business owners, uh, or I assume most of us are small business owners or work at small businesses. We can respond to those. They're great for getting backlinks. Startups, those types of generic phrases work really, really well. Um, tick this box if you don't already. What this will do is this will send you an email notification if there are any new requests that come through. Um, this button here will show you all of your previous responses. So whenever you've clicked get in contact, this is going to show them. So you can see, you can remember, okay, which ones have I responded to in the past? Um, and you can remove ones. So if you want to filter through, because, you know, not all the requests are going to be relevant for the keywords that you search. Um, you might go, this one isn't relevant. I want to remove it. So I'm just with a clean list. Click remove. It's then going to remove it from the list. And then you just work through, work through the rest. So it helps clean that list for you. All right. I'm going to move on to link opportunities. Fairly straightforward, this one. I'm not going to spend too much time. Essentially, what it does is it looks at 
uh, where two or more of your competitors have got a backlink from the same domain, but you don't have a backlink from there. So uh, tips.co.uk, two of the competitors I've had in, Cavendish, Banqueting, uh, FCI have both got links on there. Um, campaignmonitor.com, both link to two of our competitors. Bear in mind, we've done lots of, we've had a lot of competitors because of our demo account. Uh, so it's not gonna be the most relevant. But for your industry, if you add in competitors that are relevant, which you will do, then it's going to pull through ones. And then you can have a look at how they got their link. Check this, there can be some really good uh, quick wins, especially like local websites or local directories or niche specific websites, uh, accreditation, um, industry websites can be a really way of getting like a quick link from those guys. I wanna go next on to Backlink Health Check. This is our uh, newest feature that just rolled out um, last week, I think last week, recently anyway. And what this does is it helps, essentially helps you to find um, any backlinks which are harmful. So not all links are created equal. You know, if you build a backlink, you can get a backlink from good websites. You unfortunately can, can get backlinks from bad websites. They sometimes can be built without you knowing, which is uh, frustrating. Sometimes they can be built by previous SEO companies or, or SEO companies that do things. You might have heard the phrase black hat. Um, so they might have built lots of links because you can gain Google's algorithm, especially for a short time. Um, and historically, you could do it a lot. Um, but those backlinks now can count negatively towards your SEO. So how this works is you've got these three tabs at the top, right? You've got pending, kept, and disavowed. Now what pending is gonna show is it's gonna show you any backlinks um, that have got a low score, so a low domain authority score. So bad backlinks typically have a low domain authority. However, not all backlinks that have a low domain authority are harmful. So what you wouldn't want to do is go, okay, this one's got one on and disavow it. This one's got one on and disavow it. This one's got one on and disavow it. You'll want to review these um, to see if they, are, if they are dodgy. So if I click on here, okay, it's successful marketing news page. I'm going to quickly click on here to see if this is um, harmful at all. And I, I'm looking for um, triggers to see if there's anything here that screams to me like this was a page that was just created to sell links and it's very, very spammy. Um, so I've got chat box. That's a good thing. Um, it's powered by a particular person. It looks quite nice. I've got some nice blog posts on here. Um, it's all looking nice. I've got nice images. This doesn't look like this was created just for the purpose of SEO. Um, there's a lot going on. I've got a nice footer down here. They've got privacy policy or terms of use. Without doing too much for the initial things, um, uh, look, that one's looking okay. So what I would do here is I'd click keep. But if we go to disavow, I'll show you a couple of examples of the ones that we've disavowed. So this is a good example, um, Indian, uh, an Indian domain, which you know isn't a language that Hike works in. If we worked in uh, Indian, then I'd, I'd understand, but we don't. And if you see it, it's an Alexa top domain list. So it's a basically a website that links out to probably millions of websites. It, you can pay to be listed on there. We didn't pay to be listed on there, but we've been listed on there. I don't want Google thinking that we did that to gain the, the algorithm. Therefore, I'm going to disavow it. So you'd work your way through all of these. So basically, this is zero, and then you've got your list between kept and disavowed. At the end, go through your disavowed. Make sure, again, that you haven't accidentally disavowed one that you were meant to keep because once you submit this to Google, Google's going to discount it and you're going to lose the SEO value from it. Um, once you're happy, click export disavow. It's going to put it in the correct uh, file format for you, which is .txt file, and then you can upload it to Google via this button. Uh, and then what happens is the next time Google tries to go to these websites, it says, hey, Hike SEO doesn't want this link, and then that link is discounted. Um, so it can be very powerful. If you've got a lot of backlinks that are dodgy, are harmful, that you want to disavow, it can have a really positive impact on your SEO when you disavow them. So do have a look at this. Um, if you need any support, you know, give us a shout. All right, cool. So um, I'll move on from this reporting. So we've got the traffic dashboard, which I'm not going to go into too much detail. Um, it's fairly straightforward. It's going to show you traffic. You can change data at the top here. It's going to show you some top level stats. Um, I don't want to go too much into that because of time, but I do want to go into the keywords. So super important, right? This is what you want to really want to be keeping track of um, when you're reviewing your SEO performance is essentially your, your keyword positions because, because of seasonality, traffic isn't always the greatest indicator of success of SEO um, because you might be, you know, your SEO might be doing better, but if less people are searching for, you know, your product, your industry, your service at that time of the year, then your traffic's going to be down. And that's, that's going to give you 
you know, a, a false indicator of the success of your SEO campaign. Because when things do pick up again, you're going to get, you know, better SEO results. So always have a look at your, um, oh, one second. Cool. Um, always have a look at your keyword rankings. So for those who haven't seen it, fairly straightforward. You've got your keyword on the left. You've got the URL that ranks for that keyword for the moment. You've got your current ranking in Google, where you were previous. And that's either yesterday or the day before, because we check rankings every 48 hours, where you were last week, where you were last month. So you can track over time. Then you've got search volume and the priority score. Um, so you can see, okay, which ones are the big ones. Then you've got a couple of extra tabs. Um, you've got this little um, historical rankings. So if I do it for this one, for example, there you go. Over the past three months, it shows me my progress over time for that keyword. So this keyword has gone steadily up over time. A tip for everyone, don't get obsessed with looking at your rankings every day. Google does change every day, right? I mean, you can see that things go up, they go down. But overall, you wanna look at the overall trend and make sure things are going up over a three month period. Um, don't get too scared if you see things go down because things do, as long as you're doing good SEO and you know, you're constantly updating your website and doing positive actions, that obviously Heights recommended, it will go up, so don't be downhearted if you see those slight drops because you will be rewarded in the end. So yeah, keep an eye on this. Um, a couple of uh, features here, you've got the average ranking which shows it across time. You can export this, and again, send it to maybe your colleagues or to your clients, however you wanna communicate it. This little button here, competitors, is one of my favorites as well. What this does, if you haven't seen it, is, so there are all the keywords that I'm tracking for Hike. What Hike will do, is it will, for each of those keywords, it will see who's on page one, and then it will, in here, it will list all of the websites that appear most commonly on page one across all the keywords you're trying to optimize for. So for us guys, you've got Search Engine Journal um, that have 10 key, they rank on page one for 10 of the keywords that we're tracking. So from an SEO point of view, even though they're different to us, they're not a, a, an SEO platform, they're, they're one of our biggest competitors, right? Uh, then you've got WordStream, Web CEO, Moz, and for each of these, you can click on the button, and you can see, okay, what are the keywords that they rank for that, you know, that are related to ours? Um, have a look at this. Sometimes one of the biggest thing, uh, mistakes I see is that people think their competitors are certain businesses or certain websites, maybe because in the physical real world, they might be their competitors, but actually the SEO online Google world is completely different. And might, they might not necessarily be your competitors. It might be someone else. And it takes a long time to go through each one manually and figure out who they are. This tool is going to instantly show you who your top competitors are. This little button here is really nice, right? So if I wanted to add Web CEO as a competitor to track, so I can see all the keywords they rank for, um, backlinks, etc., um, I can click that button, automatically adds it into Hike as a competitor. Um, so yeah, really, really handy there. And I think probably slightly over half an hour, but I think that's everything that I want to run through. So I'm going to stop the recording now so that we can um, share this uh, with the rest of the Hike users and on our Facebook groups. But don't jump off because what I'm going to do, I'll stop the recording.